On this episode, we drive two street-focused crossovers across the Washington Overland Trail. Which is best when pushed to the limit? That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Here we have two mid-sized crossovers, both alike in dignity, at the start of the Overland Trail where we lay our scene. The green one is a 2021 Kia Sorento. This is a mid-sized three-row with the optional turbocharged four-cylinder engine, producing up to 281 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to a wet dual-clutch transmission using a Magna Powertrain derived center clutch-based all-wheel drive system. Prices you see it here, 44,290 American dollars, including destination. In blue, we have a 2021 Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. This is the two row sportier version of the Atlas with the exact same powertrain options. Our test car features the turbocharged two liter four cylinder, good for 235 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. The transmission is a standard eight-speed automatic, and the all-wheel drive system is the BorgWarner Haldex system, which also uses a center clutch to push power to the back wheels. Our tester is loaded at 47,720 US dollars, including destination. Though Kia does use a lot of off-road imagery in marketing the Sorento, the fact is, is that neither of these crossovers are well-suited to this type of an adventure. It's just a little past their comfort zones. Both have independent suspension all around with limited travel. Both feature all season tires wrapped around fancy 20 inch wheels. Both have suspension tuned for smooth pavement. Of the two, only the Volkswagen even has an off-road mode. For some reason, Kia just left that feature off of their North American cars. Before filming, Carlina and I drew straws to determine who would be driving each car. I ended up in the Kia Sorento, and Carlina is in the Volkswagen. With the first few miles of rocky trail under our tires, but before things got too challenging, we took a short break to compare interiors. If you've been in a Volkswagen, this just feels like more of the same. The seat is really comfortable. I like the bold, very solid looking dash. We do have the heated and cooled seats, which is good because Volkswagen can hold back some of the more premium features sometimes. But then again, this is a fully loaded uh, cross sport, so I guess it should be there. There are some misses here, I think. The plastic's a little cheap there. I do like this digital display and the fact that the main menu itself, it's kind of easy to navigate because it has graphics and text that's pretty easy to see. The digital gauge cluster borrowed from Audi is really nice here, but Audi does it a little bit better. Their design is more premium. Again, not a big surprise, but I really like this. The high belt line really makes you feel like you're in a little cocoon driving down the freeway. So if you like this, I would really be curious what you think of the Kia because it's totally different. Take a look at this, my first impressions on the interior. So I am noticing that we got some nice wood going on in here. It's actually like less cheap looking like in the Volkswagen. <laughs> don't tell them that, but I really like the seats. I don't feel my shoulders as like mushed forward, which is a big complaint for me. I don't like feeling like I'm this the whole time when I'm driving. I like to relax and as a short person, I even have some knee clearance here, which is a big deal for me. <laughs> and also, you know, for people who have long legs. This one has maybe a little bit more like nicer details here and there in the seats and with the wood on the dash. Oh, what? What is this magic? as you're indicating where you want to go, it shows you a little camera of what's right there. So it's also like a extra little blind spot detection. That is awesome. The Kia does definitely have its charms. I do like the fact that both of these have both heated and cooled seats, which is really great at this segment. Um, I do like the technology of the display better. It's a higher resolution display here, but I like the viewing options 
in the Volkswagen better. This just doesn't really have any significant change in the displays. And yeah, you can see your blind spot camera view, but that's not enough for me to say that I like this one better. So in short, I like the displays better in the Volkswagen, the way they design them, the way they work, uh, but I like the actual panels better in this car because they're sharper and they have better color. So we've spent enough time here and we're going to get going onto the lonesome, dusty road. The drive-in was really simple compared to what we're going to encounter. This is a family crossover that happens to have three rows and an all-wheel drive system, but it is not a dedicated off-roader. We're rolling on all seasons, just like the Volkswagen is. Our approach and departure angles aren't great. We do have a little more than eight inches of ground clearance, and I hope that is enough today. The suspension has been fine so far, though it is a little on the firm side for uh, conditions like these. Let's see, let's put it in smart mode so we can kind of sort out what it wants to do. And I will also lock the center clutch. The lock button isn't like a four wheel drive vehicle where it physically locks the front wheels to the back wheels. In this case, it is just a programming override for the computer to tell the center clutch to engage to make sure that it's always putting some power to the rear wheels. So it doesn't have to think and then put the power, it's just putting the power back there from the get-go. However, if it does overheat or has any issues, it will uh, relieve some of that tension. And this one, of course, does have a dual clutch transmission. So will it overheat today? I think that's one of the big questions. The Volkswagen that Carlina is in does have a standard automatic, which should do just fine today. And I think for the most part, her vehicle just feels a little more solid. This one feels a little bit more delicate. We'll see if that's proven true today though. I'm just having such a hard time being able to see over my hood. There's probably a bunch of boulders, but I can't see them. So wish me luck. I feel like even if I was taller, that wouldn't really do much. That is one complaint. If you were really gonna just take it off-roading, I have set it in our off-road mode. So there is currently no slipping going on. Here is the first real challenge for these all-wheel drive systems. Because we're on an incline, that back inside wheel is what is going to get us up and through this. So will it do it with fuss or will it be a fail? Let's find out. So well, let's put your vehicle into off-road mode with the variable traction selector in the middle. It's and that's pretty much it. Um, my vehicle here, I am just setting with center lock and keeping it in smart because I have no off-road setting. So now I've removed traction from this wheel and that wheel. They should be free spinning at this point. And I'm just gonna keep the throttle in and see if it can sort it out. Throttle's in full, smart is engaged. Can it push enough power to that back inside tire? It's thinking, it's thinking. It's having a heck of a time. These all seasons do not have enough traction. It can't put enough power. Let's try again. Okay, well, it's not doing it by its own. And yeah, I know that wouldn't be the normal way that you would do that, but I really wanted to test the system, stress the system, but with very minimal risk. And that failed, sorry. Let's do it with a little momentum now. Yeah, come on, you got, oh boy. That was a little harder than I thought it was gonna be. I'm curious how the Volkswagen's gonna do on this. All right, so we're in sport mode. Roll into, uh, into it slowly once you get traction off those two wheels you're going to stop completely like i did and then you're just going to roll the throttle in all righty okay stop there that's okay. where i stopped now try to roll up that by just rolling into the throttle and see if the all-wheel drive system can get you out i'm seeing a lot of wheel braking in the back yep feeling that Just a little faster this time and don't stop and see if it'll go through. Okay. Uh. Come on. 
Oh, 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 is it going? Yeah, is it going? Wants to is go. it go? Oh, it's so close. More but throttle, more I... throttle. Oh, yes. there we go. Even more. All right, so the trick on that one is even more throttle. If you're a regular viewer, you would note that other vehicles we've taken up here have done that cross-cut section better. Here's the Subaru Outback Onyx XT. Now the Honda Ridgeline. This uses the same powertrain as the three-row Pilot crossover. Compared to these other options, the Kia in particular is lacking in its ability to shift torque around the system. No, 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 no. We're not we're, a creepy clown. Not, not a creepy clown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shoot. I have one soda left that just got out of the cooler. We're going to take a hard right here. And whoever gets their back wheel to lift the highest wins the soda. How does that sound? <laughs> All right, it's a deal. It's on. <laughs> I don't feel I did a good job. Can I redo that? I guess I'll be nice. I'll let you retry. This time. <laughs> oh, you got lift? <laughs> when I'm not trying. <laughs> I think you got wishful thinking on this one, bud. <laughs> See if I can do anything with this one. again we'll see if I can reverse up this thing or not see how it does <laughs> that's like a foot of lift right there Woo! we'll check the footage and we will see whoever has the highest lift it doesn't matter forward or backward oh that was weak sauce yeah you win <laughs> Well, I don't want you to die out here. It's okay. In, uh, you win. You deserved it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this is a good opportunity to try hill descent control systems. Let's see. I hit the button there. Downhill brake control is on. I have still smart and centered clutch lock. So what makes a good hill descent system versus a bad one? This is a bad one because it is doing seven miles per hour downhill that is not a smooth safe descent no no i should be able to adjust it in increments and this one it's default useless any situation where i want to have a hardware assist is going to be extreme and if it's extreme it needs to be around one to two miles per hour just proving yet again that the x-line really isn't for this kind of stuff while I was busy complaining about the Kia Sorento's hill descent rolling too fast, Carlina thought the Volkswagen's hill descent system was too slow. So slow. Can I make this go any faster? Can I set my miles per hour? I could be asleep. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to say I could be asleep and just let this do it because it takes forever. As much as this probably was helpful, I would rather do it myself. You know, in some situations, it would be nice to use this, but when it's dry out and there really isn't that many um, massive rocks to avoid, or you know, you're in a situation where you feel like you can do it on your own, like obviously do it because this is ridiculous. <laughs> it works, but it is a snail's pace. Oh Lord. All right, I'm turning this off. This is unbearable. Okay, here is the final test. 
This is a really steep incline. And in fact, let's go to snow mode and see how these different snow modes compare. You could say because this has consistent slip uh, uh, underneath all four wheels, this would actually mimic um, like snow in a way, kind of, sort of. <laughs> sure. Okay, so mimicking snow, kind of, uh, on a steep incline. Now, I can't remember just how steep this grade is. I also have my center clutch locked, and uh, I turned off my parking sonars because those are annoying. Wow, it really kills the throttle. But I can't even get momentum to get up the hill. Let's try that again. Well, I'm gonna switch it to smart mode and see if that improves the situation. And I don't wanna launch it because I'm afraid about the breakover. I don't know if this is gonna just like, come whoa, we're going backwards. Um, I know these tires are bad, but this is pretty awful. Wow. Don't want to launch it. Uh, uh, almost, almost, almost. Okay, and gently over, gently over, and it doesn't grind. Whew, that was a nail biter. Let's see if uh, Carlina has any better luck. Let's see if you can do any better. <laughs> All right, here we go. Try a little more momentum before you switch out of snow mode. Then go back a little bit and then go with a little more speed. I know. <laughs> yeah, and with both of those cars, definitely uh, you had to get some speed to help you out. Some of that momentum, trying to do it slow was just not cutting it. I think the Volkswagen is the better car. Not because I drove it for the majority of the time, but it just has a little more oomph when you need it for this off-roading stuff. Keep in mind, it's not made for off-roading. It has such a smooth ride, even on all of, to example this right now. I really love how it has some sleek features to it. The map in the dash is just fantastic. Love that. And the touch screen is so nice. In comparison to the other car, there were a couple of other things that maybe made it look a little more fancy inside. I loved those seats. So which of these two would I choose? I would definitely choose the Volkswagen, even though on paper, it's not really the winner. The winner is clearly the Kia here. It has more horsepower. It has more towing capacity in this configuration. It also has, I think, a nicer, cooler looking interior. But when you really get down to some of those details, like the way that the drivetrain feels, the way that just the vehicle responds, the suspension tuning, all that stuff put together, between these two, I pick the Volkswagen. I do like a lot about this vehicle and the dual clutch transmission never overheated. So that's our adventure in the 2021 Kia Sorento X-Line and the Volkswagen Cross Sport, which is really just a two row Atlas with a little more aggressive roof line. But I do like it. I think it was a good looking vehicle. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. And on behalf of Carlina there, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment. What other vehicles do you want us to take out here? Uh, where else shall we go next? Post a comment below. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you again right here next week.
There is a huge moth or something on my rear view camera. It looks like Mothra is attacking the back. I was wondering what was on the back, kind of obstructing the view. <laughs>